Here, <coughs> I prepare a quick demo mm, that uh, is uh, based. Uh, I had uh, uh, before uh, when preparing the presentation, I didn't know actually if it was better to use FEMAP or other tools. I think that probably this uh, uh, demo model uh, with uh, NEI NASA in CAD or exactly the same workflow within NEI Fusion or NEI Works can be uh, an interesting uh, demo that uh, for, for a marketing and sales point of view because it allows to highlight many features of uh, any in Astran together uh, with a 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes of demo. We will talk about all the workflows starting from meshing, the orthotropic material definition, the material orientation and layup definition, and then the rest of the workflow. I pass here to the mm, software, to the model. I have, this is the, the model already prepared for the, for the demo. I, in this case, I will uh, simply delete uh, the mesh, and okay, and I got some error messages from the, from the system. Okay, <clears throat> you can see that here in NEI Nasser and INCAD, this model is a, a model that was imported by, okay, was imported by uh, an external modeler. In this case, uh, the original model was prepared inside SOLIDWORKS. <clears throat> this model, uh, is, it represents, uh, is a very simple uh, rep representation of a portion of a hull for a, of a boat, a motor yacht, or a sail boat. And uh, it uh, highlights uh, all the features that we have for uh, composite materials for uh, basic uh, linear analysis and verification and optimization of composites. The first, uh, once we have the uh, geometry here available, we can, first of all, and delete, okay, sorry, the model was already prepared. So I can edit the mesh and tell to the system to use only uh, shell elements using, in general, for all the faces, uh, linear shell uh, quadrilateral elements. And the system already automatically produce inside any fusion, sorry, inside any Nasser and INCAD the, the mesh of the component. You, you can see that the two components are not uh, welded together. There is no continuity into the geometry and these allow us to show how to, it works the automatic uh, surface contact. Yeah, that is a, a very nice feature. Materials. I already prepared the Mm -hmm. Material properties. I have uh, one material that is uh, unidirectional, for instance, carbon, carbon fiber. The difference between uh, isotropic material and orthotropic materials is that I have much more information that I have to fill into the data. The, uh, the, in general, uh, fiber materials, the raw materials, uh, for unidirectional, uh, I must provide, or for tissues, I must provide the young modulus in along the two directions in the plane and the shear modulus. Uh, I have, uh, there are many um, in literature, many sources where you can find the, the physical properties of uh, the most common 
materials, I uh, invented the numbers uh, for, uh, for this demo. And then uh, I have to put, uh, because I have different uh, uh, allowable limits, I have mu must put the, uh, along the, f the x direction the uh, allowable limit for uh, longitudinal uh, uh, tension, the allowable for longitudinal uh, compression, the transverse uh, tension and compression, and the in-plane shear. So if I want to do stress analysis, verification of the component, I must know all those data. And the only way to get it is uh, accurate is uh, using uh, exper experiments, using uh, there are uh, AESTM uh, norms that explain how to uh, uh, get this information with the sta from the standard uh, probes, from standard uh, tension and compression and shear uh, test. The a different material uh, is, for instance, biaxial, is a material where I have, in this case, I have fibers that are oriented uh, on. Uh, two uh, direction, along two direction, typically that are orthogonal uh, each other. But in any case, I have different allowables, for instance, one material. I can, the nice thing of uh, composites, I can, I can mix different uh, class of fibers, carbon, glass, aramid, to exploit uh, their mechanical behavior, so I can have a very complex uh, layout. The core material, in this case, uh, is a foam, uh, or it can be PVC, or it can be a very uh, a light material that is used only uh, to be a spacer between, uh, between the top and bottom fibers. And I must, in, also in this case, put the allowable limit if I want to do the stress verification of the, of the core. Then I can define the uh, laminate. In this case, I select the, instead of the default setting that is solid element, I use shell elements. I associate the element with uh, the face, the surface where I want to put the laminate, and using this uh, spreadsheet-like uh, interface, uh, I can put uh, materials, uh, the, the structure. In this case, uh, this is the hull, where I use mostly biaxial materials, that have a, a, each ply has a thickness of 0 0.2 millimeters, and I give a, a different orientation at 0, 90 degrees because of the B axial, and plus minus 45 degrees. So I, the designer can define the orientation of the fibers, then I have a core that has a 10 millimeters, so that is the spacer. So here I have 0 0.2 for 6 is 1.2 millimeters on top, on top skin and 1.2 millimeters on, sorry, 0 0.2 millimeters, uh, 10 millimeters. 0, 1.2 millimeters on bottom skin and a spacer of 10 millimeters. Here I have the total thickness of 12 millimeters, and I have now to define other information. One is the position of the shell mesh, sorry, the relative position of the uh, ply of the layup with respect of the surface is the bottom fiber distance. In this case, I typically uh, the default uh, NEI 
Inc. Nasun Inc. Ad, assumes that the mid uh, the mid plane the shell elements uh, are positioned on, on the mid plane of the shell in the most uh, practical cases uh, when we do the FEA model we have the mold surface or the external or the aesthetic surface or the mold surface it means that some the it will be more accurate to set the bottom uh, fiber distance to zero and pay attention about the element orientation if they, the normal is uh, pointing in the right direction. It means that we actually with this uh, setting and the normal orientation we are telling to the solver where actually is positioned the material on the geometry. Another setting is the stress, uh, the failure theory. I can, we can use many very basic or very advanced uh, failure theory for the calculation of the failure index. In this case, I set the max stress. The allowable bond shear stress, because uh, we assume that the classic lamination theory assumes that the matrix uh, uh, is uh, has uh, enough stiffness and strength to, to keep together the lamina, the lamina in the same relative position. So the verification if the uh, interlaminar shear is uh, over the allowable limits will be done uh, comparing the interlaminar shear with this value that we are putting here. Okay. For the scantling, uh, we define two different uh, uh, properties. One is the on the side of the of the scantling, because uh, uh, where we define the lamination using six plies of uh, the actual material. On the top, we put within the uh, within the the skins. We, we can imagine that during the production of the component, we put uh, we have a raw material, a tissue that. Uh, we, that have fibers oriented to 0, 90 or plus minus 45 that is draped over the geometry. We put two skins on the wall geometry. Then we take two skins of unidirectional over the top. In this way, the designer can increase dramatically the the thickness, the, the strength of the component, uh, putting the material only on where the fibers works for uh, for the bending for the bending stress. Here there is a, a, a mistake, I guess, in the the action. Yes, zero forty five. Uh, UD zero zero forty five. Okay, so I here I have. Uh, those, uh, uh, if I want to change the material, I can uh, simply with uh, this uh, uh, select, uh, selection box, I can uh, change the material. Here, also here, I have the same uh, information. Okay, okay. So I defined the <coughs> materials on, on the component. Another thing that we must check when we do the composite uh, analysis is the visualization of the normal orientation. It mean, it is uh, because we start from the surface of the mesh. The mesh is on this surface, and we assign the the thickness. We we must be sure that the thickness is uh, uh, growing 
the lamination is growing in the right direction. In this case, I can, if this is not the case, I can select with the reverse uh, normals, I can reorient the surface in the way that I need it for, uh, for my model. Okay, put some smaller, okay. Okay, I can uh, switch off the normal orientation. Another important feature that uh, we must check when we do the model analysis uh, is uh, the material orientation. We, uh, into the lamination, uh, we defined uh, uh, directions that are 0, 45, 90, 60 degrees. The, the question is, uh, they are 0, 90, 45 degrees with respect of what? We now say to the software, which is the zero direction of the of each component? For instance, for the hull surface, I select this vector. I define the zero orientation that is oriented uh, parallel to the main uh, z-axis. Okay. Now I have to do the same for the other component. And interesting here for this uh, geometry, I would like to have uh, an orientation that follows uh, the shape. And this uh, in any uh, NASA in CAD is really easy to do because I must select it's enough to select the curved tangent. So I select the orientation vector, for instance, this line, and then I select those surfaces. And I can see here that the orientation is following the shape of the geometry. This kind of a setup, for instance, in a system like FIMAP is not so easy to, to set up. Okay. Now I can switch off the visualization of the material orientation. I already defined the, uh, the load. The load is simply The load is a simply a, 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 a uniform pressure on the, the external surface of the hull. The constraint is a, a, a fixed constraint on the uh, perimeter of the, uh, of the surface. And I have a, sim a symmetry condition in this plane because uh, I assume I have a, another portion, a, an equal portion of the hull. Uh, uh, after the symmetry plane. So I guess I define everything. No, because if I switch off the visualization of the symmetry plane, we can see that the two parts are not connected together. So I must define an automatic surface contact welded to, uh, that says to any ion astron to glue together all the component. I save the model. Okay, material orientation, everything. I have to have it. Uh, I have to select the, all the physical properties. For composite materials, I have to select, uh, is enough to select one dummy material because all the material are uh, already loaded. Uh, within uh, the physical properties. So I presume I have the model